you know. Hi. Nice to see you again. We did Thank have you. a good laugh last time, didn't we? Oh, we, we did. <laughs> it the, was wizards, brilliant. the wizards and the lizards. And the toads. Don't <laughs> yeah. forget the 13 toads. <laughs> well, I have to go outside to find a toad. <laughs> and kiss it. it. Might be a prince. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> no, thanks. Uh, I don't, it's a. Uh, uh, toads are poisonous, aren't they? Yeah, I think some of them are. Don't go kissing toads. <laughs> <laughs> it's not recommended, everyone. Don't kiss toads. <laughs> no, don't. Don't do it at home. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, I hope you had a nice week. Yeah, it's been good, thank you. <laughs> good. And how did the life go? Yeah, good. You did two. Um, you did two events, and I missed the second one because I had to go out with the dog. Yes. See the parrot. Oh, me. Yeah. It's like, what's going on, Mum? She knows it. She knows she's a film star. She's the mascot from Charlie's Angel Tarot. She, she talks as well. Ooh. It's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That is Georgina again. <laughs> And Leon, yeah, <laughs> told you she's loopy Lou. No, 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 not now. Okay, anyway, um, we're going to discuss um, the workplace today. Um, great, you've got them as well. Okay, Millie, no, we're not going to bark. Okay, Intro introduction to this. Um, <laughs> Millie, stop it. So, um, the introduction to this is um, that it's written by Marla Brooks. We did the Witch's Oracle cards la, uh, earlier this year, Wendy and I, and I just wanted to do something different. And I saw this in the catalogue of a Shiver Red Feather, and I thought, Marla Brooks, yes! So I asked, can I have this, please? So there are 51 spells in here, and like we said last week, it's got a modern touch to it. It's got stones, it's got oils and everything else. But today we're just doing the introduction of the book and what we are going to do. So when you buy this book, you get 51 spells, incantations, oil. You also get more information on the uh, witch's calendar, um, on um, not only oils or stones, but also uh, uh, about different types of spiritual things that you can do, like automatic writing, uh, bibliomancy. I don't even know what that is. And bibliomancy, I'll just do this very shortly. Uh, a book of your choosing method to keep an answer to a specific question, to get an answer to a specific question or to receive messages about the future, open a book, totally randomly, select a page while your eyes are closed and then place your index finger on your right hand anywhere on the page and then open your eyes. Whatever word or line you are pointing to can be interpreted. I'd never knew that. But that was something magical. Yeah, I didn't know that you could do that with any book. Oh, all right. And what is ceremonicy? Well, we'll get, get into that later in the course. So if you want to find out for yourself, buy the book. You've got crystal balls scrying. I love that. I've got mine, smoky crystal. And we'll I'll do an example of that in the um, workshop. Egg divination. That is intriguing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, mirror scrying, and this is what we can practice in the workshop. And this is getting streaming, your intuition, your gut feelings, your psychic abilities will come out because everybody's got it, but you just have to sharpen it. It's like, I believe being psychic or uh, clairvoyant, uh, either visually, mentally, auditively, verbally, you can sh um, polish, it's like a diamond, a rough diamond, you polish it up, 
each facet. And well, the introduction is it goes into that uh, the belief in witches dates back to uh, antiquity, according to the early Christian church. Witches never existed. Wow. But they did persecute them. But by the 15th century, the church had modified its opinion, even though they had finally acknowledged our experience. They mistakenly believed that in order to obtain our powers, we sold our souls to Satan. And that is ridiculous, really. And that ridiculous belief was used as justification for the church's sus subsequent subsequent subsequent, oh, subsequent <laughs> burning at the stake and hundreds and thousands of religious heretics of all types so it's not just witches so people please let it go that we sell our uh, souls we don't believe in me no. i stick with god i name him god or the divine doesn't matter. I love him. I can't. I've been like when my father and mother passed away, he was there. You can just feel him. OK, I won't go too much into um, the introduction of the book and what witches are and where they came from. Um, but basically, there is one, two, three, three pages uh, introducing uh, a little bit of history, understanding towards witches, Wiccans, pagans. And um, thanks to J.K. Rowling, Harry Potter films or books, that it and Bewitched, it's come alive. Even Mary Poppins, and it's a children's film, and she was a witch because she did magic. Okay, so look at some uh, at the witches with a different perspective. Have understanding, have a different perspective to other people that have different interests than you, like. Tarot readers have a different perspective on astrolog or astrologers. It's like a driver doesn't stop to think about motorbikes. They are more susceptible and dangerous um, because they have to swirl between the cars. It is basically uh, another rule that the witches should say broaden his perspectives and that's what i think is so magic about these books and um, they actually are the way i think so perhaps i am a witch <laughs> i don't care uh witch's power powers is also said by marla is usually believed that it comes through the bloodlines but um uh, but Marla Brooks also says, if you want to become a witch, you can study to become a witch, listen to your intuition uh, and develop uh, an interest. There's so many different witches. On Google, there is still, um, uh, no, YouTube, not Google, YouTube, there are nice uh, channels that actually show you what they do with the herbs and they go out to do a garden. There's a beautiful witch and she she cuts, she has talents and she makes all her own pictures for the shadow of the Book of Shadows. And she puts plants in there and she does recipes. She's really a good lady. And um, she has allergies. So that's why she started to get involved in this. And she's much better now. So there you are, the proof is out already. Now, these are some of the questions I would ask uh, Georgina. Um, can you add anything else onto the introduction? Um, there, there was a couple of, uh, there was one point actually that springs to mind. Um, when Marla talks about it being passed down through the family. I also believe in reincarnation. Yes. Okay. So I also do believe mean, that Do you mean that you believe that you've come back into this world and that you have taken your witches uh, yeah. talents with you? Yes. Yes. I believe that I've been here quite a few times now. Yeah. And each and every single time 
I've been some kind of healer, light worker or witch. Yeah. That's travelled with me through the ages. It's just part of my soul and who I am at a soul level that's just come with me through the different. So, yeah. yeah. Although I have, my family do have psychic powers that mm -hmm. have been passed down through the women on my mum's side. It's not necessarily just that that's had an effect on me being pagan. Okay. So, I, yeah, I, th I think it's possible for it to come from other sources. Ways, other sources, yeah, not just your biological family in this lifetime. No. Well, if you are adopted and you don't know about it, yeah. if, you, if you don't know your parents, then um, it, it could be a big shock. With me, I didn't know I had it because until my father died, I was 21, four days before my birthday, 22nd birthday, he passed away and that's when I saw him. And that's, and I said that to my mum and my mum said, oh, you should have woken me. She said it was an ancestral body. I've never ever heard of an ancestral body before. And she said, well, I've got it. Why didn't you, you tell me? <laughs> Why didn't you see that I had this? Because she used to say to me, don't be judgmental or don't draw such conclusions so quickly. And I was right nine times out of ten. Maybe it's something that she struggled with and... She was scared of it. She didn't, didn't want to do anything to do with it. People wanted to... Even the university in Holland, in Utrecht, uh, that did psychology and paranormal, they wanted to examine her, but she didn't want to be a guinea pig. And of course, 60, 70 years ago, it was taboo. Yeah. Yeah. So I know why I can understand the other side of the coin, why people um, are scared of witchery. Because yeah. it's usually some something that you like I had somebody here the other day and I stopped, got talking and they said how do you know that when I read them so, without cards yeah said well I can I can see more than you can see <laughs> and it, it unnerves people because they yeah. don't know they can't see that's why we I use tarot cards so people the viewers can see yeah it makes it more understandable and acceptable. But by trying to be open-minded and broad in your views, this will open most probably something up as well to the viewer. Yeah. Now, then we've got how to create and cast a spell. And what is written in, very importantly, it says, you yes. must know that you have the power within you, the magician. Again, this is how I relate it to the tarot cards. And it, it, um, you take over for a while because I haven't been talking too much. <laughs> no, I, I agree with you there. It, it is all about our, our own inner power, not, not only within ourselves, but that we're connected to outside of ourselves as well. And about harnessing that and drawing that in to then focus into the spell work. Yeah. So, and I, I can completely see why you link that with the, the magician in the tarot cards. Yeah. I love my tarot, uh, Oracle tarot cards. I was scared of uh, a rider weight and I did put it down. That was the first deck I ever bought after my father's death. And I looked and looked for something. I, he did. He was a captain, so he did astronomy. And that's too much figures and all that. So, I, And I went into astrology, into the side of the signs, not the planets and everything else, because that was too much for me as well. Because I am dyslectic. And... Um, they say, somebody said to me, 
if you lose the sharpness of one gift or sense, and other sense is sharpened. And that's why my psyche woke up, I suppose. Um, anyway, how to create a spell. This basically goes into the elements, um, what you have to do accordingly. Uh, like you've got east, south, west, north, and uh, um, uh, and that you you've got some incantations before you start a spell, and then you've got also the invoke the archangels of the four quarters by uh, facing east, as you say, and you start at the east and you go to the south, then to the west and to the north and back to the east. And before me stands Raphael, behind me stands Gabriel, on my right stands Michael, on my left stands Oriel, for all or for about me shines the pentagram, and above me shines the six rayed star. So that's beautiful. I usually, I never knew about the pen pentagram or the star, but I usually say, in front stands me, Ariel, Raphael, Gabriel, and Michael. And that's how I open up. Because it goes, you're making the V open to your heart chakra and your solar plex. And Michael, he's my shield. Yeah. My <laughs> knight in armor. He's got the shield and the sword. <laughs> anyway. That is the um, that is how you start preparing for your spell. There is obviously a lot more to it because it's in a book. Um, but I'm not going to uh, disclose the secrets. I have to keep to the rules of the witch just now. <laughs> how do I start? Okay. Um, now you just have to come in and join the workshop. Okay. First come, first first. I've already got two people that are interested. Okay, so there's only eight places left. Um, the the lesser banishing ritual. What does that mean to you, uh, Georgina? To me, with the it's one that I'm thinking of. Um, sorry, I should have checked my notes really. Well, I'll read a little bit from the book then. Is that okay? Whilst you are making... Uh, See the, so I'm, I'm getting the lesser balancing ritual confused with something else. Something else that I saw in there, I think. Which was the... If I flick to the front, I'll probably notice which one it was. Spells? Could it be with yeah. the spells? Yeah, there, there was one of the spells. That I've got it confused with. Ah, you've gone further in the book because you've actually done the spell, I suppose. I've just been looking I've, at them. I've read through them, <laughs> but one jumped out at me when I when I opened it. Which one was that then? It's what I'm trying to find. It when I opened the book, it was like, look at me, and now that I'm looking for it, I had that with the computer. I, oh, really? Yeah, because my computer is always, that's why I said earlier on or last week, uh, Mercury retrograde. Leave me alone. That's the one that jumped out. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good I got confused with the, the lesser banishing ritual. Um, <laughs> the lesser balancing, uh, banishing, lesser banishing ritual can be done at the beginning of the spell. Casting ritual to clear the area for magical workings and then again after to discharge the magical force uh, raised during the ritual. So it's actually um, opening the uh, place up before you start casting a spell and then also closing it off. Yeah, it's because I know it as a different name. And that is? That's what's confused me. To me, that is, 
it's it's more about drawing your your protective circle and your um oh where do you know the name do you know the name i do i just can't think of it okay it, well, it's that gone. Would be our first difference because <laughs> marla is american so perhaps they call that the lesser banishing ritual in america so let yeah. us know when it comes in and that would be the english one casting your circle casting your circle okay yeah, that's what i know it as when you draw in each of the, the the different directions as they do in this it's pretty much exactly the same yeah um i've never used archangels in it before um for me it was always the the guardians of each direction as okay. you work around that is that is how they start off here uh with the uh, the guardians being east south west and all that i yeah. take it and then the angels. Yeah. So I've I've always just your called angels, it. your angel therapy or whatever you call it, will come in handy. Yeah. Yeah. Funny enough, I've just got into um, Radley Valentine. Oh, he's lovely. He's amazing. I, but I don't know why I've never read any of his books or anything before. Now I've got two of his tarot decks and one of his books, and it's like I just can't get enough. I haven't read the books. I've got his. his uh, I've got several decks of his, and I think the aim. Uh, the one is the um, Archangel Tarot Oracle, and the other one the Power uh, Oracle. Okay. Angel Power Oracle. It's yeah, a big, big line on it. But you the... had, you had it in the shop, I think. No, it was not you. It was Jan, from yeah. Sen yeah that's the yeah. deck yeah no i haven't got either of those i've got his angel tarot deck and his fairy tarot deck so they're actual full decks of tarot 78 cards i didn't know you had a fairy one yeah and he's changed them slightly okay no i'll show you which ones i've got sorry You've most probably got the blue deck, the blue, the the blue box. Yeah, the, yeah, they've both got blue boxes. And this is the power, the Archangel Power Tarot deck, and they um, they are different than the um, Archangel Tarot Oracle. Um, they are blue on that front, um, and they also have colouring uh, for each. Um, suit. Yeah, the the deck that I've got, there's um, dragons on one suit, which is the wands for the fire element. Then you've got mermaids on the water. Water. Um, unicorns are on air. Oh, nice one! I don't um, know. Bring it in next week to show, yeah. please. Yeah. Yeah, I'll bring right. it in with me. This, this is Michael. That is air, the swords. Then you've got orange, which is Gabriel. Okay. And that is fire, wands. Then you've got green. And obviously, I, I had to get used to this. I thought green would be trees. I associate green with trees. Um, but it's water. Oh, oh, because of the heart center. Yeah. Most yeah. probably. And then you've got pink for the pentacles. OK. Which I think is weird, but never mind. Pink is love. That's also for the heart. Yeah. Um, and then you've got purple for the major arcana. Okay. And that's the four colours coming back on the back. Oh, uh, yes. So there we go. Getting back to tarot again yeah getting distracted <laughs> yeah well it's still got to do with this yeah okay right now just for those people that aren't going to do the workshop um we have also the north is earth the north is also salt uh in the wiccan life is that correct yes 
And then we've got east is air, incense, south, fire, and candle. Then west, water, is water. And I'm going to have to try to keep remembering this, because if I'm reading cards and if anybody says time or place, then I can say somewhere in the west. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. You can bring that into it as well. So I've got, I'm learning as well, like I said. You don't have to be a Wiccan. OK, now the ritual tools. You take over a little while. <laughs> so <clears throat> for ritual tools. Now we've got to see if I can pronounce this. I think it's pronounced Anthem. Yeah, Anthem. Anthem. something like that. But it's the, the ritual knives that we use. They aren't. They're, they're a blunt ceremonial knife that are used as a, a traditional tool. It's not something that I particularly use in my practices, but I do know of them. And they're normally um, decorated. The handles are decorated with symbols and things like that. You can also get them in crystal, I've seen. Oh, really? Um, awesome. Yeah. So you can get the whole the blade and the handle is all made out of one piece of crystal. Oh, nice one. I've seen them made out of selenite. Um, so yeah, but they they're used in in ceremony practices as a not for physically cutting things, but for metaphorically cutting through energy and things like that. For cutting cords, um, bells are also used. Um, yeah. They're one of one of the oldest known ritual tools, and the the sound it can cleanse the the energy and the air around you. Sorry, I've got to stop. Okay.